Good evening. I'd like to call the Canton Township Board of Trustees meeting to order on April 13th, 2021 at 7 p.m. I'd like to call for a motion to appoint Treasurer Slavin's temporary clerk for this meeting only. So moved. Second. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Treasurer Slavens, can you please call roll on the motion? Absolutely. Berninski. Aye. Foster. Aye. Ganguly. Aye. Graham Hudak. Aye. Sechrist. Slavens, aye. Snyderman. Okay. Oh, we'll probably have to also state where we are calling in from. So if you don't mind yep. everybody just going through again, saying where you are calling in from. Okay, Borninski. Hi, I'm um, in my home in Canton Township. Foster. In my home in Canton Township. Ganguly. Hi, I'm in my home in Canton Township. Graham Hudak. Hello, I'm here at Township Hall. Slavens, hello, I'm here at Township Hall. Okay, great, thank you. Um, can I hear a motion to adopt the agenda with one presentation added? for our OHM presentation from Director Jade Smith. And one RBA is going to be added to consider approving budget amendment and headcount adjustment for the Municipal Services Building Division and Public Works Division. Madam Supervisor, I move that we adopt the agenda with the addition of a presentation from Director Smith and an additional RBA um, cited G1. Support. Thank you. Um, Treasurer Slavens, please call roll call on the motion. Berninski. I, I'm sorry, I just want to clarify um, the additional item is G1 or G8? I'm G sorry, G0. G0, sorry. G0, okay, thank you. Um, I. Foster. I. Ganguly. I. Graham Hudak. I. And Slavens, I. Thank you. Motion approved. Can I have a motion to approve the minutes for March 16th and 23rd, 2021? Madam Supervisor, I move that we approve the minutes of March 16th and uh, March 23rd, 2021. Support. Support. Thank you. So do I call you clerk slavens today or treasurer slavens? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Trustee Borninski. Aye. Trustee Foster. Aye. Trustee Ganguly. Aye. Uh, Supervisor Graham Hudak. Aye. And Slavens, aye. Thank you. Now I'm going to go to the next item, which is public comment. Is there any public comment? Non-agenda items or, or even agenda items, if you'd like to ask any public comment. I don't see any hands and attendees. I don't see any phones. Uh, this phone would naturally dial star six nine if they were on the phone, but I do not see any phones. So we'll do another public comment at the end. Can I hear a motion to pay the bills? Madam Supervisor, I make a motion that we pay the bills. Four. Thank you. Uh, Treasurer Slavens, can you please sure. call, call on the motion? Trustee Borninski. Aye. Trustee Foster. Aye. Trustee Ganguly. Aye. Uh, Supervisor Graham Hudak. Aye. And Slavens, aye. Thank you. Motion passes. The first item on the agenda is a presentation for it's a legislative update with Stephanie Johnson from Corey Johnson and Leave It. And Stephanie, I believe I elevated you. Okay. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, I hope everyone's doing well. Um, I don't know. I'm trying to figure out where do I begin. Uh, there is a lot happening. If I gave you details about every piece of legislation that you are probably going to be interested in over the course of the next several months, it would be over 100 pieces of legislation involved. Um, so I'm going to start with a brief uh, update of where the budget is. As you know, the legislature had their, um, they recessed for two weeks and they, this is their first week back from their recess. And uh, next week they're anticipating the subcommittees will be reporting out the various budgets. 
um, and that's on both the, in both the Senate and the House. We've yet to see what's in those subcommittee budgets, as you know that they go from subcommittee to the full appropriations committee, so then they'll be vetted through the full appropriations committee. Um, we're gonna, usually we try, the state tries to have a budget completed by the end of June. They like to leave and go on the summer recess to ha having the budget done. Uh, last year that did not happen and I'm not real hopeful it will happen this year, frankly. I think that there'll be some budgets that could likely get completed early, but the bigger ones like Department of Health and Human Services and, and, and um, the transportation budget, those things I see dragging out a, a lot longer. Uh, we just went through a process prior to the spring recess of appropriating some of the federal dollars that have come into the state for COVID. Uh, we still have more dollars to appropriate based on the earlier, this would have been last summer, uh, federal expenditures that were that came to the state. Uh, we probably have an, another $2 billion left to spend on that. Furthermore, we're anticipating more federal dollars coming in that we're going to have to figure out how to spend. The, the new federal dollars coming in um, will likely, some a, a good portion of it won't have to go through the legislative process, but there is still a portion that will. So we've got a lot ahead of us. And as you know, there is, um, there's a lot of disagreements going on right now between the legislature and the executive office on, on how to dole out these dollars. In addition to, uh, it's getting wrapped up into how we are, what, what COVID policy is being enforced at, the give, at any given moment in time. So all that gets combined to make the budget process a little bit trickier this year than what we've had. Um, the interesting part, it's not because we don't have funds. We, uh, based on the COVID dollars that have come in, uh, both on the unemployment side, both on the you know relief for businesses and for uh, municipal governments, we were able to save quite a, 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 a good amount of general fund dollars. So we're not arguing over a lack of resources. We're arguing over how to best appropriate the many resources that we have, which is kind of a unique situation for us going forward, a little different than what we're used to used to working with. Um, the, there's several bill packages that have been introduced. Uh, one was one very large bill package, 39 bills in total, uh, was introduced tri right before the legislative uh, recess. And this was a, a Senate package of bills on election reforms. And those is, these are going to be some pretty big, um, big heavy lifts going forward. Uh, already, the executive office, the secretary of state has been highly critical of the package and the goals and the intent behind the package. It is largely driven by, well, entirely driven by the, the Senate Republican caucus. These bills are going to, they're starting to take these bills up this week. There's good, they're going to take them uh, at small groups at a time. Uh, this week, they're going to take up Senate Bills 277, 281, and 306. Uh, 277 and 281 largely deal with the qualified voter file and what has to be reported and um, when a person is deceased and how to handle that. And um, Senate Bill 306 is largely pertains to the Secretary of State. So it's in, in what they have to publish on their website. So this is gonna be a long, long process going forward and dealing with these 39 bills and as they make it through the process. And then what kind of fate they may, may, they may uh, in, encounter when they land on the governor's desk. Um, again, they're highly technical um, and it's, it's all packaged around, you know, election reform and, and security in our election process. The other uh, bill package that has recently come up that is going to receive some attention, um, hopefully it'll be something that can make it over the finish line, is a bill package on recycling. Uh, we have uh, an act we call, commonly call Part 115 
and it's it's structured around how we handle public waste. There's no requirements or regulation in that act on how we handle the re recycling components. And this has been an effort that's been uh, tried for the past uh, led probably two legislative sessions, maybe more. I know last year it was worked on, it's a bipartisan package. They worked really hard on it, but they ran out of time to get it over the finish line. So this year, uh, some bi a bipartisan group of legislators in the House have introduced it again. Um, their House Bill is 4454 through 4461. And it, it puts forth some parameters and regulations for municipalities to have recycling opportunities available and how they do, are to deal with that, particularly um, communities that are of, of a specific size, say 5,000 or more. So that's gonna be something we're gonna keep our eye on and see how that moves through the process. It is gonna be pretty complicated and there's a lot of interest involved in that on all sides of this, um, all sides of the debate. And so it's gonna take some time for that to work through the process. Another, um, bill package that I know that uh, many of the uh, of the township members here have expressed an interest is criminal justice reforms. We do have a, a few bills that have been uh, put out there, uh, 4291 and 92 around law enforcement uh, reform and, and uh, 4291 is about law enforcement disciplinary records, making those publicly available. Um, and then a use of force reporting bill. I, I, you know, these bills are, are uh, very partisan. They were not introduced in a bipartisan way. And I think that that's gonna, that's gonna be a difficult lift to get those over a finish line. Um, we do have a, a use of force database in the state. Uh, we kind of, we spearheaded that. Michigan was one of the first to, in, um, be involved in this with the FBI. Michigan State Police is responsible for tracking it and, re and reporting it uh, once a year. So we are pretty proud of the participation within that database and the, uh, and the reporting that's being done. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if these bills do move forward. I do anticipate more police reform bills being introduced over the course of the next year, year or two. Um, I don't think this will be the end of it. And we'll just have to kind of play this by ear and see where it goes as time goes on. Um, so those are the those are the big items that are on the radar right now uh, that we are definitely tracking for the township. Uh, another Obviously, the big elephant in the room all the time is COVID and what is happening, what's the latest happening in that front. And as we are dealing with this virus, this pandemic, um, as you know, I'm, I'm sure many of you have heard the reports that we have an extremely high positively caseload of COVID right now. We are nowhere near um, out of the woods on this in any, in, in any way, shape or form. Uh, the governor has been urging the, the uh, federal government to get more vaccine into the state, hopeful that the more we can get vaccinated, that'll drive the numbers down. I know that that's been a, uh, sounds like a bit of a heated negotiation process. And in the meantime, they, the governor just yesterday extended the um, in-office restrictions on uh, workplaces, on businesses. She extended that for six months. Um, that's through my OSHA. Um, largely, it, in her comment, she indicated that she's not anticipating that people are not going to be going into the office for six months but the extension was an, a way to start working with the business community to determine protocols on how to go about getting back to the office. So that six month extension is, is supposed to be used for that purpose. 
Uh, we also found out today that there are some issues surrounding the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. So today the Michigan has suspended temporarily the use of that particular va vaccine. So obviously that takes some more vaccinations offline. And the governor has asked for high schools and uh, school sports, as well as dining in to be um, restricted for the next two weeks. She, she did this last week, so we, she's urging us to do it for another week. It's all voluntary. Um, I think, you know, one of the issues with a lot of the orders that uh, have been put out regarding trying to uh, help and um, mitigate the spread of the disease is, is it, it's an enforcement issue, compliance and enforcement. It's really difficult to, for, to enforce these orders. And our compliance isn't probably as high as it needs to be in order to really have the impact that we are hoping for. So we've got a long way to go on this front. And um, obviously our vaccinations are, we're doing pretty well. We're, we're, we've got millions of people vaccine, having vaccinations now, which is a good thing, but we still have a long ways to go before um, we, are, we, we are through this pandemic. Um, I don't foresee the governor issuing any more orders as far as, um, stay at home, stay in place. I don't foresee that. I, I, it obviously could happen, but at this point, that's not what we're hearing. And uh, so we're just going to kind of keep monitoring this as well. As you know, um, individual counties can create the, the state of emergency they need to continue uh, having their, their public meetings virtual as well. And most, most counties have followed suit with that. Um, so those are the highlights of what's going on within the legislature right now. And, and um, I will, I'm willing to take any questions that anyone may have, and uh, I'll fill in as much detail as I can. Any questions for Stephanie? Summer? Hey, Stephanie. Um, Hi, Summer. I'm um, just wondering if you could tell us um, what is happening, um, if anything, on roads? Well, um, <laughs> I think that there's been some discussions around the federal COVID dollars that have come in to see what potential uses there could be on that front. There hasn't been any uh, discussions, to my knowledge, on um, any type of fuel tax or anything. If you remember uh, prior to COVID, that was the hot issue was a gas tax and, and how much was, would be enough in raising that. That's all gone by the wayside. Um, I think attention is starting to get back to the roads. Obviously the transportation budget, we'll see what comes out of that next week and, and the subcommittees both in the Senate and House. Um, but it's it's not been it's not had the attention that it was getting prior to COVID for sure. Um, and I know that uh, the one thing it appears that just by my limited knowledge that we didn't have the spring thaw that we've had in the past. So the, the potholes weren't as plenty and as deep <laughs> as they have been in past years. And I think that that's been kind of a, a saving grace for us as well. So we're, we're kind of in a holding pattern, I guess, is a, that was a long way of saying that at the moment regarding the road funding and roads. Okay, and then I don't know how much you're paying attention to um, the Independent Citizens Redistricting um, um, Coalition um, and what is happening with the census numbers. I know that we are anxious to see our new census numbers. So I didn't know if yeah. you knew, um, had an update on that. Last I heard they were saying September, um, but I wasn't sure if there had been any, any further updates. I wanna say that I was hearing closer to November. Okay. Um, I know that there might have to be some, um, this, I think that the Supreme Court may have to weigh in on how to handle this if the deadlines aren't met according to the, the constitutional amendment that was passed. So that's a, that's a, I haven't been watching that terribly closely, but that's the pieces that I've been able to pick up thus far. I can do some more checking on 
on that for you though and give you some more precise information. Okay, thank you, Stephanie. Yeah. Thank you, anyone else? Nope. Um, Stephanie, I know you talked about the, the 39 bills on election reform. They're saying on the news that what's coming through Michigan is similar to what went through and what's being pushed in Georgia. Are we, is that true? Uh, I think it depends sometimes on who you ask, <laughs> okay. but there are there are probably a few bills in there that would be very similar. I, I'm not terribly familiar with, with, with what's going on in Georgia, but um, I, I do know that the Secretary of State has expressed some reservations and concerns over the bill package as well as the executive office. So if Governor Whitmer does uh, veto these, what is the process that um, some believe will happen after that? Well, pretty much the stat, you know, what would is currently in place would stay in place unless they can muster up the votes for a veto override. Uh, that has been attempted in the House already on um, some boilerplate budget items in the supplemental that the governor line item vetoed. They were unable to muster up the, the votes to do a veto override. There, no, no caucus has that large of a majority in either chamber to do that. So they'd have to do a bipartisan veto override and that's pretty difficult. Okay, great. All right, thank you. Anybody else? All right, thank you very much, Stephanie. Yes. Thank you, and you keep us informed and stay safe. You, thank you, you too. Thank you. Next on the agenda is the item that we added from Jade Smith. It is the OHM study presentation he wanted to um, show the board today. Uh, good evening. Yes, um, actually, if we could promote Brad Lear and Kent Early and um, Susan Nepper. In case there's any time to do the presentation, but these are our OHM. Obviously, Brad Lear is our DPW manager. Susan oh, and uh, Kent work for OHM, and they're the ones that developed a, a storage analysis report for us. So I put together a presentation um, and sent it out to everybody, I believe, yesterday in regards to the storage analysis um, of our water system. And uh, as most of you know, we were in talks of creating a regional water authority with the communities of Livonia, the city of Westland, Northfield Township, and then Canton Township. So I'm going to kind of go through what's transpired from almost a year ago until now um, with the authority and then also um, what our storage analysis report showed so that um, we can um, have some discussion on moving forward either with in the authority or not. I have already presented this to um, a supervisor and the treasurer and the clerk, um, but we thought it was a good idea that we share this with all of you. So I'm gonna share my screen and go through this. Okay. Um, can you all see the, the PowerPoint here? Um, it's saying start has started sharing, but we don't see it yet. Oh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. um, my computer. Let me see. Maybe I can. Uh, no, I don't want to share. I want to give you. See if that helps. Oh. There we go. You see the PowerPoint? Yes. Okay. Oops, that just. There you go, thanks. All right, um, so this is in regards to obviously the, the water um, storage review and comparing um, what, um, kind of going through the regional water authority process. So in summer of 
2018, Canton uh, installed a $2.5 million gallon water tank and 18.5 million a day per our booster station was constructed and put into service in the township. Um, we were sitting for a couple of years seeing, you know, working out the kinks and looking at how the controls um, could be best utilized for the township. And then in July 2020, there were discussions that began um, between those four communities, Canton, Livonia, Northville Township, and the city of Westland in regards to a possible regional water authority. In August of 2020, uh, the Board of Trustees took formal action to explore this authority. Um, with a memorandum of understanding. And then in October, um, the OHM did put together um, some scenarios as to how a regional water authority could um, benefit all of the four communities. And just from a pure um, uh, strategy of approaching GLWA with a with the rate structure, um, not with any capital improvements. Um, the savings showed approximately about a $500,000 savings to be split amongst the four communities. You can see on the screen that there were sen um, four scenarios and Canton Township's on the second line and it ranged anywhere from us saving $24,000 a year to $147,000 a year. So um, with that, all the communities did agree at that point too, that it was best to approach the authority in a couple of different phases. One, this phase right here, is it work? Is, there, is it feasible? Does it make sense? And then the second phase was gonna be um, moving forward with some capital infrastructure and capital expenditures that would be shared across all four communities um, to, uh, to grow the system. So in December, um, through continued talks, we really got to a point where we're like, okay, we don't know if it's a good idea to move forward with the authority because we don't really know. We haven't really done a, for, a formal analysis on our own system since we put our tank in and the other three communities also felt the same that they wanted to do their own analysis of their water system to compare to what they could do on their own versus what uh, the authority uh, could provide for them. So in January 21, the board approved OHM to perform our water storage study. And in March, uh, we re did receive our study. And um, there are some recommendations that came along with that. So I, that's a real quick like history of what's happened since 2018 and in the last year. So I just want to jump right to the numbers. Um, but Canton's uh, study was completed and there is a recommendation that we stay on our own and renegotiate our contract with GLWA now that we have three years of data with our current tank and spend a little bit of capital on our own, implementing some controls and system improvements on our own system to save us um, additional dollars than what was, what was um, more than what was in this slide here. So the recommendation through the report was to, um, like I just said, to renegotiate the rate with GLWA and then put these controls in. And you can see the controls are, and I didn't, I didn't want to get too specific on anything too technical. And we can obviously have a, a um, and that Diane and, and Anne-Marie both sat through the other report and um, understanding the operations of the water, the water system, the, the how it's charged with GLWA. Um, we can definitely have some further discussion on that, but for this tonight, I kind of left it a little bit high level, but if there's questions, we're here to answer anything. Um, so making some ad ad adjustments to our own control valves um, in two areas of the township and at the booster station, and then looking at bringing our pressure, realigning our pressure district just a little bit on the west side and making some changes to, um, uh, to better utilize th those those valves and, and the system itself. So the, what, the rec or what the recommendation um, produced was by us making these minor changes to our system and renegotiating our contract with GLWA, it would net us almost $810,000 in savings on an annual basis, which obviously compared to 147,000 is considerably more just by us taking on some of the control ourselves. Now, there would that would come at a cost because we would have to make sure that we uh, make those adjustments to those pressure valves 
um, and controls, and that would cost us about $570,000. And again, there's the estimated revenue or the estimated um, savings that we would see of 810,000. So within seven months and, or less than a year, we would realize that savings. So even in the first year, we would still see over $240,000 in savings, which is still more than the 147 best case scenario with going with the authority. Um, I did put a map in here as well. Actually, I'm gonna go back and make one more comment on, on this slide that I, I hadn't thought of previously. So when we, when we talk about the savings that we have here of 810,000, um, you know, there is gonna, we, 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 if we were to stick with the authority and move forward with the authority, um, the piece that still has to be negotiated, as I said, would be what, how do we break up the capital and how would those capital expenses, which would be in the, um, and I'm gonna have to defer probably to Kent or to Susan to correct me, but um, tens of millions of dollars of upgrades to the system. And Kent would have a portion of that, which would probably more be more than the $570,000. And we are still paying debt on our current water tank expansion that we did in 2018. So there will be a lot of negotiation and a lot of unknowns um, in the future when we move to phase two, if we were to stick with the authority and um, take on some of that capital expenses um, as well. And then you've got the management of the expense of the authority, who, how does it operate? So, but, at, at this point, we now are at a good point to actually reanalyze our system, which is what um, Susan did for us with this study in recommending a few changes so that we can actually make those changes and realize that savings a lot quicker than we could with that authority, which I wasn't here back then, but this was the whole point of Canton putting in this tank um, was to, to position themselves better from a negotiation standpoint with GLWA and to actually have more controls in place uh, within the system. I do have up on the screen now a map of our system um, just for reference if anybody has any questions in regards to that. Um, and I believe, yes. So I know that was not a really long presentation, but I wanted to, to leave it there um, and then open it up for some discussion if there is some. Um, because the regional water authority um, is still an option at this point I, from our um, from OHM's perspective and then I think also from us as operators it may not be the best move for the township at this point but that's that's our opinion and I will obviously let the board make that final decision okay thanks Jade are there any questions Tanya. So Jed, how long will the um, the infrastructure, you know, how what is the time um, period that it will take to make these changes? Um, I would. I'm going to actually put uh, Susan on the spot um, to answer that, but I would say that we would get that construction done as soon as possible because then what you would want to do is have it function for one full year or one peak season which would be our peak season of 2022. That way we could then go back and renegotiate those rates uh, with GLWA because they do want to see a, a proof year where, where the changes you made to the system actually produce what, you're, what you have on paper. And, Susan, I, and how long will, the, will it take to actually make this, um, these improvements? You said you know it will be made within the next year, but how long will it actually take for us to uh, do this infrastructure, uh, the building. Yeah, um, Brad or Susan, do you have any comment on that? Jade, this is Kent Early. Okay. Uh, yeah. Ma'am, Supervisor, Susan said she had the ability to mute or unmute herself a while ago, but she lost it when you reset it, when Jade uh, shared his screen. So she can hear us or hear you, but she can't unmute herself right now. That's Susan. Never. Never. So I think uh, uh, real quick, it would just be a matter of uh, OHM designing the improvements for us. I'm not sure how long that would take. Susan could answer you better on that. Getting it bid and then construction wise, 
the minimal amount that we have to do, I don't, I wouldn't see that taking but a couple months, to be honest with you. Okay, thank you. The design phase, maybe Kent can touch on that, how long it would take. Yeah, well, does, from a design perspective, it would probably take, I'm going to guess, probably three to four months. And then you've got some permitting issues, um, you know, from a constructability phase, and really Susan should speak to this. Um, yeah, Brad, Brad's absolutely right. It, the actual physical construction wouldn't take probably long at all. Uh, it's not a huge amount of work. Susan, did you want to comment on that? Yeah, I would say um, there's also a control study aspect associated with this. So we have to look into their the current system controls and optimize those. So the, their system has some, it's called ADA, and it's a, like electronic programming that talks to your booster station where your pumps are that come from the booster or from the storage tank. It talks to the storage tank. It talks to your GLWA meter pit. So there's some like background changes in that that need to be done. Um, and then with GLWA, when you renegotiate these contract rates, um, you know, GLWA is going into like contract renegotiations with all of their um, clients. And the next, I would say their fiscal year 2023 which is like the end of 2022. Um, so yes, Jade, you're right. They like to see that you can actually control your peak hour, but you guys will be able to reduce your max day down below that before um, you guys actually prove that you can do these rates just based on what your recent data shows that max day contract value can actually be reduced and GLWA will see that on their side and won't you know, have any opposition to that. Um, it's that peak hour rate that you want to reduce down to those 21.55 that they'll want, actually want to see you can do that. Um, and we might be able to talk to GLWA sooner and prove that um, prove that we can do that over one summer before those contract negotiations start. Okay, thank you, Susan. You're welcome. Any other questions? Kate? Thanks. Um, I had to, but Susan just answered my first one, which was about how um, difficult it would be to, to renegotiate. So I, I appreciate that. Um, my other question is, I think, fairly simple. It was just on that map, Jade, that you had. I was wondering what controlled and uncontrolled meant. R right. Um, I'll, I'll bring the map back up. Thank yeah. You. Sure. So the controlled, um, we, we control everything to the east here. And again, Susan, I wasn't here when this was designed, but the con so you may have to chime in. Right up here at the top, you can see um, there's the water tank and anything on this side is actually controlled. We can control our usage from this line over with that tank. So it, during non-peak hours is when we fill that tank um, and, then, uh, and then release that depending on the demand that's needed in this area. This area over here to the west is actually uncontrolled and actually not, we don't have any control of that. Yeah, so the uncontrolled side basically can use as much water from GLWA as they want. Um, and the controlled side, we try to prevent what you're pulling from GLWA and are actually draining from your storage tank at times. So instead of GLWA dinging us on rates, um, we could do use that storage tank too reduce those rates from GLWA. Thank you, that, um, that's really interesting. <laughs> um, unfortunately, for those of us on the west side, we're, uh, I guess, gonna be uh, our, uh, costing the township more. <laughs> But one, of the, one, one of the things we were looking at, and, I, and um, this was done with the initial study years and years ago, was looking at a future tank on the west side. So that is still something that would be feasible. It doesn't make sense right now because we don't know, we're not completely built out. We don't have all of the usages and the density. So once we have that future build out, then we'll go back and we can do another study to make sure that we've got the appropriate um, size tank and make sure that it's still right for the township. 
And then the other thing that we talked about the other day on the phone was putting together um, an education piece and trying to get the community to control when they're using their irrigation systems and just being smarter about the use of water. So, so that is something that we um, are going to be uh, implementing as well this spring, or I guess this summer, spring's almost over, but um, getting that information out there to everybody. Any other questions? So Jade, what was the estimate if we would have joined, the, if we are to join the RWA? The, the estimate of the savings? Uh, yeah, I think that, and then how much are you estimating it might cost us? Do we have that, an estimate at all? So we do not have the estimate um, of the cost as far as the capital goes, because that would have been phase two of the authority. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we don't have that. Um, yet, because right now we haven't made the decision to move forward with that. Um, I, I will say we had a meeting actually just today, um, kind of a regroup of the four communities and everybody's going back and talking to their um, elected bodies and making sure and, and seeing which direction they want to go. Um, so unless Susan or Kent, if you guys have any free other comments on the phase two, but I don't believe that those those costs exist at this point. No, they, they do not. The only thing I would indicate is relative to just give you a proportional sense, the two and a half million gallon storage tank that the township built uh, back, you know, three, four years ago now, that was a, uh, you know, eight, nine, ten million dollar project. And I, you know, the preliminary numbers from the RWA show them needing at least that much storage, if not more. So just to give you a sense. Okay, so what is your, then what is your recommendation, Jade? What is the team's recommendation? Um, as we spoke the other day, we think that there's, there's, a, there's an advantage to us staying on our own and making these control changes and then renegotiating on our own. And I think, you know, the other day when you and, and uh, Diane and, and Michael, we all met, we kind of went over some of those scenarios. Um, because the other thing, you know, and I know, um, you know, we're still paying debt on our current tank. So to negotiate a regional water authority um, would also take not just negotiating the, the nuts and bolts of how it's going to work and then what to build, but we really have to look out for Canton because we're still paying the debt. We're bringing a very, very large asset to the authority. So what does that look like and how much would one of those communities be willing to pay back to Canton is like, let's say a credit. Um, and I, I only use that word just because I think it makes sense at this point in time. But, you know, so the, dy the dynamics of the authority um, would have, have some sort of complexities to it, too. And Northfield Township is in the same, the same boat um, as they are. Actually, um, th their DPW uh, manager today, um, they're he heading into a, I believe it's a booster pro or a small tank or a booster project next year. And they're moving forward with it uh, as well. So they're doing some of their own um, improvements to their own system to put themselves in a better position. Okay. Um, I guess the thing is, is what do you need from us today? Do you need us to give you a, an indication? Um, yeah. I mean, they, I don't. There was no formal action to like create the authority. The um, the understanding was to go out and research it. So I'm coming back with the with the numbers and the two studies um, to show the what the authority savings could be versus what our own savings could be. Um, you know, granted, yes, there's no, there would be no capital expense to go save $147,000 with the authority, but after year one or less than year one, we're gonna actually save $800,000 a year. So I think the numbers pretty much speak for themselves from my perspective. Okay. Um, why don't we get an indication from everybody? We can do it that way. No always has question. Diane, do you want to start? Because you met with Jade earlier. Sure, on. sure. Yeah. And it was a great presentation as today is too. And it looks like, you know, I feel can't would be best to stay on our own, uh, update uh, some of the control systems like they had recommended, you know, um, staying on our own. We don't have to pay for another authority. We can have our own controls. So I'd like to just... Um, stay just with Canton and upgrade like they had mentioned. So. 
So. Okay, thank you. Summer? Yes, that seems to make sense to me for us to stay on our own and update um, the controls. All right, thank you, Kate. So, yeah, I agree with everyone. Um, I think the given that the return on the investment is less than a year, I think, yeah, this um, totally makes sense to stay on our own. All right, thank you, Tanya. Yes, um, I also agree with um, all of us about uh, keeping it in our own control because we have seen a cost saving. I was just wondering, when do we start, like, do we start having, um, uh, you know, an RFP put out for the actual work? Like, when does it begin the process? Um, when we, today we said, give a go ahead. If you go ahead, give a go ahead to Jade, will that start from next week? Do yeah. Working yep. So, yeah. So after our discussion tonight, um, I will be getting with Susan and with Kent and we'll be putting those wheels in motion to, to get that process started and, and figure, you know, and, and put that agenda together in that timeline. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I agree with the rest of the uh, members today that uh, I think it really makes sense to keep the controls here and uh, put in our own infrastructure uh, investment. All right, thank you. Um, Jade, I also agree with that, you know, okay. for our discussion earlier also that we keep the controls here and return on investment would be easier for us to maintain our own system and do our own negotiating. Okay, great. And I do believe that um, as a result of our meeting of the day too, I know he's not on, but I know that the uh, clerk's address I, was, I believe was in support of that as well the other day. Yes, yes, thank you. Okay. So um, then, well, um, does this mean you go back to the, the group or how, what is the process for you from there, from now? Yep, well, um, they, I, I think the writing was on the wall today during our meeting. Brad could probably, he was on the meeting as well. Actually, so was Susan. Um, I, so now what we have to do is each community just needs to email um, the gentleman from OHM, which isn't Kent or, or Susan, who was heading up the authority and just let them know uh, officially where we're at. So I'll send that email out either during this meeting tonight or first thing tomorrow, and let them know. And then I'll, like I said, I'll circle back with Kent and Susan on the process to move the our own improvements forward. Okay, great. All right, does anyone else have anything else? Any other questions or statements? Brad, did you have anything? I know this is your last meeting with us tonight. No, I think uh, I had Jade had it all covered and I just want to thank, um, for being present and the, the uh, study for us. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Brad. Thanks for all your help and all your work on this. And thank you also to Kent and Susan and Jade. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. The next um, item on the agenda are uh, resolutions. We have two resolutions. Um, so I would like to ask Trustee Borninski to please read the first resolution on Earth Day. Into the record. Thank you. Uh, can you hear me okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Resolution of the Board of Trustees, Charter Township of Canton, Michigan establishing April 22nd as Earth Day in Canton Township for all future generations and encouraging residents, businesses, and institutions to celebrate our environment and promote the well-being of all on Earth. Whereas the Earth and its ecosystems are our home, and in order to achieve a just balance among the economic, social, and environmental needs of present and future generations, it is necessary to promote harmony with nature and the earth. Whereas everyone in Canton has a right to a healthy environment and pollution has been associated with several health issues affecting the earth's population. Whereas plastic waste can be found everywhere, land or sea, even in the most remote places on the planet, affecting both humans and animals and approximately only 10% of plastic waste is recycled. Whereas humankind is currently facing tremendous global challenges, among them the need to manage an increased amount of waste. 
Whereas human generated greenhouse gas emissions from fossil fuel combustion exacerbated by unsustainable land use are a leading cause of climate change. Whereas it is essential to involve the community in the design and implementation of solutions for pressing environmental issues. And whereas Earth Day is an annual reminder of the constant need for environmental activism, stewardship commitments, and sustainability efforts. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Board of Trustees of the Charter Township of Canton does hereby proclaim April 22nd, Earth Day, throughout Canton Township and encourage all businesses, all residents, businesses, and institutions to use Earth Day to celebrate our environment and pr promote the well being of all on Earth in the state of Michigan and Township of Canton and the protection of the environment. Great, thank you. I don't, um, I did not ask Amy, do we have to vote on putting a resolution or we're just reading it into record? Is that correct? Uh, I think, I we, think we vote on them. I think we yeah. vote on resolutions. Yeah. Okay, and great. it does have spot for eyes and nays. Okay, great, great. So, so can I have a motion to um, vote on Earth Day resolution? Madam Supervisor, I make a motion uh, that we put the resolution of Earth Day into the records. Support. Thank you, uh, okay. Treasurer Slavens. Please read the roll on the motion. <laughs> Trustee Borninski. Aye. Trustee Foster. Aye. Trustee Ganguly. Aye. Trustee or er, Supervisor Graham Hudak. Aye. And Slavin's aye. All right, thank you. Motion adopted. Today we read the resolution of Earth Day into the minutes. The next resolution we have is on Arab American Heritage Month and Trustee Foster will read that resolution to us. Can you hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Resolution of Board of Trustees Canton Township, Charter Township of Canton, Michigan recognizing Arab American Heritage Month and celebrating the heritage, heritages and cultures of Arab Americans and the contributions of Arab Americans to Canton Township. Whereas for over a century, Arab Americans have been making valuable contributions to virtually every aspect of American society in medicine, law, business, education, technology, government, military service, culture. Whereas since migrating to America, Men and women of Arab descent have shared their rich culture and traditions with neighbors and friends, while also setting fine examples of model citizens and public servants. Whereas they brought with them to America their resilient fa family values, strong work ethic, dedication to education, and diversity in faith and creed that have added strength to our great democracy. Whereas our Arab Americans have also enriched our society by sharing in the entrepreneurial American spirit that makes our nation free and prosperous. Whereas the history of Arab Americans in the US remains neglected or defaced by misconceptions, bigotry and anti-Arab hate in the forms of crimes and speech. Whereas Arab American issues such as civil rights abuses, harmful stereotyping and bullying must be combated in the forms of education and awareness. Whereas they join all Americans in the desire to see a peaceful and diverse society where every individual is treated equally and feels safe. And whereas the incredible contributions and heritage of Arab Americans have helped us build a better nation now, therefore be it resolved that the Board of Trustees of the Charter Township of Canton celebrates the contributions Arab Americans have made to society and does hereby declare April 2021 National Arab American Heritage Month in Canton Township. We encourage our residents, employees in the larger community to join us in this special observance. Thank you, Trustee Foster. Can I have a motion to um, re put this into our minutes, the Arab American Heritage Month? Right. Support. Thank you. Treasurer Slavens. Sure. Please take roll. Sure. Trustee Borninski. Aye. Trustee Foster. Aye. Trustee Ganguly. Aye. Trustee or er, Supervisor Graham Hudak. Aye. 
and Slavin's eye. Thank you. And we have a guest who would like to um, speak on this for a second, Samara Sakakini, about National Arab American Heritage Month based on our resolution. Hello, Samar. I think you should can go ahead. I mute myself. Okay. Marhaba y'all, or salamu alaikum, Ramadan Kareem. There's a lot of uh, salutations today, but I would like to thank you all, Shukran Jaziran, for uh, this proclamation. Uh, Madam Supervisor, the Distinguished um, Board of Trustees, and um, Canton Leisure Services, I don't know if Greg is there, and also um, the Commission of Culture, Arts, and Heritage. Uh, this is a meaningful proclamation for our community. Uh, our community, the Arab American community in Canton is very diverse. Uh, and uh, I know, you know, uh, hopefully we don't have the census of 2020, but uh, I think it has, uh, you know, increased in the last 10 years. Um, we like to thank you and uh, we want to tell you we're here for you. Anything you, um, we, we like to give back to the community and um, anything you like from us, we're here to help. And um, uh, one, uh, I don't know if, uh, I am on the Commission of Culture and Arts and Heritage, and I'm honored to serve Canton. And uh, I've been on the commission for five years, and I got to see what Canton is doing for the community. And uh, we are so thankful. Canton is a great place to live. And uh, I know we all pick Canton because of its diversity. And we appreciate you all. And uh, we're here to uh, help in any way we can. And um, I want to say, uh, Again, thank you, which is shukran. Thank you, Supervisor. Thank you very much, Samar. You're thank welcome. you. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> All right, thank you. The next item on the agenda is our consent calendar. Can I have a motion to approve our consent calendar? Uh, Madam Supervisor, I make a motion that we um, approve C1, consider the second reading and adoption of ordinance amending chapter 70 of the Canton Code of Ordinance, section 70 through six, stopping, standing, or parking. C2, request approval of one year annual maintenance agreement for the Tyler Technology New World System, ERP. Uh, C3, consider awarding bid and approve purchase order of the exterior and interior sign replacements at the Public Works Building. C4, consider the approval of an emergency replacement purchase for a 2021 GMC cargo van for the Department of Public Works. C5, consider retaining fishback ink for design of a public parking lot near the Village Arts Factory. C6, consider approval of purchase for the engineering design of ADA site improvement for the capital improvement plan. C7, consider awarding contract and approve a purchase order for play area fall surface replacement at Flood and Park. C8, consider awarding contract and approve a purchase order for the Skylight Replacement Summit Gymnasium. And C9, consider approval for the emergency purchase order to replace two rooftop units Unit 8 compressor at the Township Administration Building. Can I hear support, please? Support. Thank you. Um, Treasurer Slavens, you please take roll call on the motion? Sure. Um, Trustee, I'm sorry, Trustee Borninski. Aye. Trustee Foster. Aye. Trustee Ganguly. Aye. Supervisor Graham Hudak. Aye and Slavin's eye. All right, thank you. Motion passes, consent calendar passes. The next item is our general calendar, um, item G0, which we added on to our agenda. Item G0, consider approving budget amendment and headcount adjustment for the Municipal Services Building Division and Public Works Division. I believe there are two motions here. Yes, and uh, Madam Supervisor, I move the following budget amendment increase revenues to account number 101-000.693 to $77,232 and account number 52000.695 to $120,592 and increase expenditures listed um, in the packet. 
Okay, thank you. So the building division, oh, I can come here. Wait, support? Oh, here's support. Support. Thank, thank you. you. The building division has seen record setting activity and is already trending at a rate that will surpass 2019's permit applications, the largest year in Canton's history. At the current moment, we are receiving on average 100 permits a day and overtime is being worked during the week and on the weekends. Other communities, contracts and contractors and builders are experiencing the same trend across the region. And then you add in our record new home builds, it is overwhelming for the staff. We are attributing this growth to the recent issuance of stimulus checks, people working from home, making home improvements and regular seasonal activity. This is all in addition to the 16 active new subdivisions in the township. It is projected to stay this way for the years to come as well. With all of these factors, it is a request to add an additional TPOAM union clerk three to the building division. Adding this position should almost be a cost neutral addition as the added revenue collected by the additional permits will offset the salary and benefits. And I will um, not read the second part because that'll go with a second motion so we don't get confused here. But um, Director Jade, would you like to add anything to that first motion? Um, <clears throat> no, other than, no, that pretty much sums it up. I do believe though that part of that first motion in that budget, um, yeah. that it is for both of those up top right. um, because one of the increased revenues um, is for the clerk three and one is actually for the, the DW superintendent. So all of those um, resolutions pertain to both of the paragraphs in the executive summary. Okay, okay, all right, thank you. Um, are there any questions on this first part for adding a clerk three to the building department? You know, I, can I just make a comment? I will say, um, I am seeing an influx, like you you had read in the um, a, a influx of people coming in with permits and that, um, because often they drop them in our drop box. So I know that the building department is busier and I'm sure with the COVID people are doing more projects at home. And um, so I'm very supportive of this. I guess the one comment, and I appreciate that, Dan. Um, I think the one comment I do have too, is I'm look, trying to looking to look at what's coming through the planning department. And I think you've all seen the, num the numerous um, projects and subdivisions that are coming through the planning department. Anything that's in the pipe, pipe that's gonna be approved um, is gonna absolutely have a, a, an effect on the building department at some point. So when I put in there that we don't see this trend changing, we, we truly don't. It was some of the big construction that's, uh, uh, commercial construction that's coming along Michigan Avenue too. Um, that's definitely going to um, the additional help is going to be needed. Okay, thanks. Any other questions on this first part of the executive summary? Kate? Um, so right now we're talking about the first motion, which is the budget amendment, right? Yes. yes but it this pertains is to both the, um, the like, like Jade said, it, the, it pertains to both positions, both the clerk and the superintendent position. Right. So I just wanna make sure that we understand what we're voting on. Yeah, so can this be divided out at all, Jade, in terms of? Yeah. Yes, um, so your general fund, which is the 101 line item of the 77232, and then the expenditures that are also assigned to general fund, which are 101 line items, that is pertaining to the clerk three. The 592 line items, that is uh, the water and sewer fund um, line item accounts, and that goes with the DPW superintendent. All right, great, that helps. Okay, so any questions on the clerk position? But also the, mo the second motion is to approve both of them. Yeah, this, this is just the increasing clerk. the revenues for them. And then the next, I mean, I could have made both together, but okay. I didn't. Okay, that's okay. Well, why don't we, we can still vote on both together, but if um, any questions on the clerk three before I read the second half of the executive summary? Okay, let me read the second half. We can ask questions. So moving on to DPW, there's a vacant superintendent position to be filled that has existed for years and was left vacant when previous superintendent was promoted, promoted to manager as it was determined at that point that we may be able to do without it. This has changed with the growing infrastructure and the greater number of township initiatives. In preparing to pose for the position, it was discovered that it was inadvertently left out of the 2021 budget. 
I have talked with Director Trumbull and we are not sure where the communication lines got crossed as it was in the 2020 budget and it is in the 2022 budget. The intent was never to take it out of the budget and the request is to add it back to the budget. This will be posted internally to qualified existing employees and will offer them future promotional opportunities and proper succession planning within the division. This position is funded by the Water and Sewer Fund and will have no effect on the general fund. So Jay, did you want to add anything to that one other than what I said? Nope, I'm good. Did anyone have any questions on that part of it? Can I, can I just make a real quick comment on that? Um, I know after Bob left and uh, Brad took, you know, stepped up into uh, Bob's, um, Brad has been very busy. I'm, DPW is a very, Canton Township is a bus busy um, place, but DPW is very busy. And I know Brad, um, we're so sad to leave him go, Brad Lear, but um, he, has worked extremely hard without having somebody underneath him. And so um, I think this is really, I'm very supportive of making sure that we we have somebody step in and then eventually we'll find a replacement for Brad. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Okay, so then I guess we should vote on both motions then since we kind of went <laughs> Actually, since we just have the one motion on the floor, I'll just, we can go through both, but I'll just um, take a roll call vote on the first motion. Okay, thank you. Um, Trustee Borninski. Aye. Trustee Foster. Aye. Trustee Ganguly. Aye. Supervisor Graham Hudak. Aye. And Slavens, aye. And then I'll read the second motion. I move to approve the additional clerk three and Department of Public Works superintendent to municipal service department headcount. Support. Thank, Thank you. you. Please take roll call. Um, Trustee Borninski. Aye. Trustee Foster. Aye. Trustee Ganguly. Aye. Trust, er, Supervisor Grand Hoop Deck. Aye. And Slavens, aye. Right, motion passes, thank you. Item G0 passes. Our next item is item G1. Consider amendment to Appendix A, zoning of the Code of Ordinances to establish standards for outdoor dining accessory to a restaurant. And Madam Supervisor, if it's okay, I'm gonna make this into one motion. Okay. I move to introduce and hold the first reading of the proposed amendment to Appendix A, zoning code of ordinance of the Charter Township of Canton as provided in the attached ordinance, which establishes standards for outdoor dining accessory to a restaurant. Further, I move to table the consideration of the amendment for the second reading on April 27, 2021. Will your support please? Support. Thank you. Thank you. In light of the global pandemic and its impact on businesses, the Township Board adopted a resolution on June 9, 2020, enacting the Canton Business Support Provision. The Business Support Provision set four temporary standards for outdoor dining, and this provision was amended by the Township Board on November 24, 2020, to include an extension of time. The proposed Section 6.02 AA of the Zoning Ordinance acknowledges and incorporates many of the concepts underlying the Business Support Provision. The proposed zoning ordinance amendment also incorporates a collection of best practices from several Michigan communities whose outdoor dining standards were researched during the preparation of the proposed amendment. With the expiration of the amended business support provision and the township having no existing standards in place specific to outdoor dining, we propose the enclosed amendment to the zoning ordinances to include section 6.02 AA, setting forth comprehensive standards applicable to non-temporary and temporary or seasonal outdoor dining accessory to a restaurant. Jay, did you have anything to add? Um, I, more of just a comment, I guess. Um, we've already started to, hear, to receive a few inquiries on making outdoor dining more permanent at some of the restaurants that don't have it currently. So I think because of COVID and if it taught us anything, we're gonna to start to see that more in our site plans as they come in. Because um, if someone comes in and builds a new restaurant and it'll be on their original site plan, they won't actually have to use this ordinance so I, I think this will meet a need for our existing businesses in the town, township. Great, thank you, Summer. I just wanna say that this came before um, the planning commission a few weeks ago. 
um, and it was um, overwhelmingly supported, number one, to support the businesses that already exist in our community that are looking um, for ways to, um, you know, provide outdoor dining during COVID, but also recognizing that um, dining has changed and, you know, that restaurants will want um, outdoor space and seating. So happy to support this. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, Tanya? Yeah, I just wanted to comment that I really like the, you know, the proactive initiative by the township, by the municipal services to implement this, um, like rather than us going and, you know, doing this research, finding out comparative analysis of different communities and uh, really appreciate this. And this will be really good for the businesses going forward. Um, really appreciate the initiative. Great. And a lot of that kudos um, goes to Patrick Sloan, our, our planner, for kind of spearheading this. But then it also involved um, public safety as well from a safety perspective. So, in yeah, building. Thank you. Anyone else? Kate? Yeah, I, I agree with everything that's been said. And I especially um, love the um, tabulation of all the, the comparative analysis so we could see what um, other cities and municipalities are doing. Thank you. Anyone else? Great. Treasurer, please take a roll call the motion. Okay. Trustee Borninski. Aye. Trustee Foster. Aye. Trustee Ganguly. Aye. Supervisor Graham Hudak. Aye. And Slavens, aye. Thank you. Motion passes. Next item, G2. Consider first reading of Code of Ordinance Amendments to Part 1, Chapter 74, entitled Utilities. Article 2, Division 2, Subdivision 2, entitled Scheduled Rates and Charges, Section 74-83. Madam Supervisor, I move to introduce and table the consideration of first reading of the Code of Ordinance Amendment to Part 1, Chapter 74, entitled Utilities, Article 2, Division 2, Subdivision 2, entitled Scheduled of Rates and Charges. Sections 74 through 84 with publications on April 13th, 2021, and then removed from the table for second reading on April 27th, 2021, with publication date of April 30th, 2021, and the effective date, May 1st, 2021. Support. Thank you. Each year, staff prepares a comprehensive analysis of proposed rates and charges for water and sewer services based on the true cost of service. The board has adopted those recommendations and it is now necessary to amend the township's utilities ordinance to reflect the changes being proposed. In order to satisfy the revenue requirements for the 2021 fiscal year, the attached rate changes are recommended for adoption by the board of trustees. The new rates would take effect on all customers bills starting May 1st, 2021 and represent an average bi-monthly reduction of 10.95%. Uh, Jay, do you wanna add anything? Uh, no, I don't think I have anything new to add since our study session on this. Okay, great. Any questions or Diane? I just want to, I just want to commend Jade and Wendy for working so hard on this and your staff. Um, so we will be going from $11 and 25 cents per thousand gallons down to $10 and 25 cents. So that's a, a, the biggest reduction I've seen since we've been here. Um, and we've always had somewhat of a reduction in our rates. Um, so this is very exciting. Very exciting. Very good. Thank you. Anyone else? No, congratulations. Uh, we should really be shouting this from the rooftops. You know, what happening is we talk about COVID, 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 and this is more great news. So congratulations, everybody. Thank you very much. Um, Treasurer Slavens, please call a roll call on the motion. Trustee Borninski. Uh-oh. Did we lose Kate? I don't think so. Oh, there you go. You did lose me for a moment. Oh, oh no. I got booted from Zoom, but. Oh, dear. Oh. Are we voting? Yes. <laughs> yes we're voting on this water. So, yes, I am voting aye. <laughs> Trustee Foster. Aye. Trustee Ganguly. Aye. Uh, Supervisor Grim Hudak. Aye. And Slavin's aye. Great, thank you. Motion passes. Great job. 
Item G3, consider continuation of two contracts with Great Lakes Contracting Solutions LLC and Construction Engineering Services for the 2021 Road Improvement Program. And Madam Supervisor, if it's all right with everybody, I will do this in one motion. It's a big mouthful. Is that okay? No objection. Sure. Sure. I move to award construction contract extension to Great Lakes Contracting Services LLC for the 2021 Canton Center Major Road Project and issue a purchase order and contract extension for not to exceed the amount of $729,600. $49.91 from road construction fund listed in our packet. I also move to award construction engineering to Fishback Inc. for the Canton Center major road project and issue a purchase order for the not to exceed amount of $91,622 from the road construction fund listed in our packet. I also move to award a construction contract extension to the Great Lakes Contracting Services LLC for the concrete residential road projects for 2021 and issue a purchase order in the amount not to exceed $1,049,691.50 from the road construction fund listed in our packet and further move toward the construction engineering construction engineering to Spalding de Decker Inc. for the residential concrete program for 2021 and issue a purchase order in the amount not to exceed $108,900 from the road construction fund listed in our packet. Mm -hmm. or Thank you. Canton Township Engineering Services and our consultants have completed the design for the 2021 Major Roads Project and for the 13 subdivisions in the Residential Matching Program for 2021. Based on their performance in 2019 and 20, we have met with Great Lakes Contracting Services and they have arranged to hold their unit rates for the 2021 program. Engineering Services request that the existing Great Lakes contract for Major Roads Concrete be extended to address one concrete project plan for 2020. One Canton Center for to Cherry Hill. In addition, one small area of concrete curb repair along the Lots Road north of Palmer has been added to the contract with Great Lakes for this year. The other 2021 projects, Haggerty, Van Born to Michigan, and Sheldon, Cherry Hill to Ford are asphalt projects and will be publicly bid in the spring. Based on our established unit rates from Great Lakes, this estimate for this work is $663,318.91. Based on the nature of this work, we request a 10% construction contingency of $66,331. Our engineer for the major roads program, Fish Beck Incorporated, has provided a pr proposal for construction engineering for $91,622, resulting in a total award under the major roads program of $821,271.91. Engineering Services also requests that the existing Great Lakes contract for residential roads be extended for 2021 to address the concrete subdivision projects. This work includes work in the partner subdivisions and additional miscellaneous drainage repairs in the township. The residential road work is estimated at $954,265.50. Given the nature of these projects, we request adding 10% contingency to the construction cost, $95,426. Our engineer Spalding de Decker has provided two proposals for CE for a total of $108,900. This results in a total award under the Residential Roads Program of $1,158,591.50. Um, Dave, do you have anything to add? Uh, nope, nothing. All right, thank you. Any questions? All right, great. Treasurer Slavens, please take a roll call on the motion. Trustee Borninski. Aye. Trustee Foster. Aye. Trustee Ganguly. Aye. Uh, Supervisor Graham Hudek. Aye. And Slavens, aye. Thank you. Motion passes. Item G4. Consider continuation of a contract with Asphalt Solutions Incorporated and Construction Engineering Services from our engineering consultant for the 2021 Road Improvement Program. And Madam Supervisor, I am going to put this into one motion as well. 
Okay. I move to award a construction contract extension to Asphalt Specialist Inc. for the concrete residential road project for 2021 and issue purchase order in the amount not to exceed $430,294 from road construction fund listed in our packet. I also move to award construction engineering to Spalding de Decker Inc. for the residential concrete program 2021 and issue a purchase order in the amount not to exceed $38,700 from the road construction fund listed in our packet. Support. Thank you. Thank you. Canton Township Engineering Services and our consultants have completed the design for the 2021 subdivisions in the residential matching program. Based on the performance in 2020, we have met with Asphalt Specialists Incorporated and they have agreed to hold their rates for the 2021 program. Engineering Services requests that the existing ASI contract for residential roads be held over to address asphalt subdivisions projects planned for 2021. This work includes work in various subdivisions in the township. The residential road con con contract work is estimated $391,177 and construction engineering costs from Spalding to Decker of $38,700. Given the nature of these projects, we request adding a 10% contingency to the construction cost, $39,117, resulting in a total not to exceed cost for these projects of $468,994. Uh, Jay, do you have anything to add? No, just to say that these are gonna be the remaining 13 subdivisions um, from our first go round. All right, thank you. Any questions or comments? Great, Treasurer Slavens, please take a roll call on the motion. Here, Trustee Berninski. Aye. Uh, Trustee Foster. Aye. Trustee Ganguly. Aye. Supervisor Graham Hudak. Aye. And Slavens, aye. Thank you, motion passes, item G5. Consider approval of a purchase order for fire alarm and intrusion alarm systems at the parks maintenance building. Madam Supervisor, I move to approve a purchase order for the Parks Maintenance Building Fire Alarm and Intrusion Security to Interstate Security Inc. at 51233 Oro Drive, Shelby Township, Michigan, 48315, in the amount of $15,770 with funds to be paid from the account listed in our packet. Support. Thank you. Thank you. As a requirement from the Canton Fire Inspection Department Leisure Services staff con contacted Interstate Security, who Canton currently holds a security contract, to quote the replacement of the fire alarm and intrusion system at the Parks Maintenance Building. The current fire system is outdated and no longer meets the standard codes. Interstate Security Incorporated worked with the third party and Canton's fire marshal to quote devices necessary for this building to meet code. We are reconnecting recommending Interstate Security Inc. to purchase and install fire security at the Parks Maintenance Building in the amount of $15,770. Uh, Greg or Chris, would you like to add to this? I really, it's pretty straightforward. So really don't have anything to add unless there's further questions. Nothing on my end. Okay, thank you. Any questions? All right, great. Treasurer Slavens, please take a roll call on the motion. Trustee Borninski. Aye. Trustee Foster. Aye. Trustee Ganguly. Aye. Supervisor Graham Hudak. Aye. And Slavens, aye. Thank you. Motion passes. Next item, G6. Okay, G6. Consider approval of board vision, mission, objectives, and strategy. Madam Supervisor, I move to approve the board vision, mission, objectives, and strategies. Support. Thank you. The Canton Board of Trustees have worked hard to develop a vision, mission, and individual program visions with objectives and strategies. These individual objectives and strategies will lead the township goals over the next four years. The individual program visions include welcoming community, healthy ecosystem, quality infrastructure, organizational climate and culture and financial stability. The vision, mission, objectives and strategies will be placed on the township website and tracked with various projects. Each project will be evaluated for any cost or timing impacts and presented to the board for implementation and funding approval as needed. 
So I think everybody knows about this. We spent a lot of time developing these and we know that the, um, the actions are still being developed, but we thought we, it would be a good idea to at least approve these and so that the community can see what we've been working on. Um, does anyone have any questions or comments? Okay. Um, I just wanted to say thank you, um, Madam Supervisor, for um, leading us um, on our, our um, development of these, uh, of the vision, mission, and strategies, because I think we did um, a lot of really good work, um, some hard work, but um, I think in the end, we, we got to where we wanted to be, and we have some really great um, things that are going to be implemented in the future. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Summer? Yeah, um, I would agree with um, what Trustee Borninski um, said. And also to add to that, um, I really enjoyed the session, the couple of sessions that we had um, with the staff and the directors and um, were able to get some of their input on some of the um, the strategies and goals that we want to set for the township and look forward um, to continue working with them on some of the action plan that we lay out from the, um, the strategic plan. Thank you, Tanya. Yeah, I was just, I was just going to say what Summer was saying that we had such a good discussion with the directors and uh, uh, there's so much wealth of information that uh, we discussed and uh, we have within our own township government and uh, well, it was they were very receptive of um, the goals and uh, the vision that we planning to share for the and um, I am looking forward to what we do with these goals um, the strat um, objectives for the next years to come for Tim very excited thank you Kate Sorry about that. Um, yes, so um, I wanted to echo, uh, you know, that I also thought we had a great discussion with all the directors. Um, and before we vote it, vote on this, I just wanted to um, ask what is the process that, you know, once we've adopted these, that we will be following up, will we be looking at um, checking up quarterly on on our goals or how will we be doing that? Yes, yeah, so right now the directors and the managers are um, working on their some of the actions that we went over with them when we met with them um, in the public meeting and they're giving timing, cost, um, resources required. And so we're gonna summarize that, but you're right, every quarter these goals will be placed up and we can um, we can do it like at the beginning of the meeting and show the different states of each of the goals and where we are to track. And as each of the um, projects come through, we'll bring it, if any cost is needed or resource impact, we'll bring it before the board for approval. So yes, we should approve okay. it. I think probably every other month, that's a good point. Okay, thank you. I mean, I think it's wonder wonderful to have goals, but you also have to make sure you follow through and um, you know assess where you're at. Right. No, that's a good point. That's a good point. Thank you. Tanya? Yeah, well, based on what just Kate said, um, I also wanted to add that, you know, in our future board packets, if we are working on um, the different RBAs, maybe we can um, associate them and how they um, align to the goals, like mm -hmm. each RBA in the future, so that um, everyone is in the understanding that we are following through on what vision we, we put uh, for the township. Right, that's a good idea. HRBA will make sure that the goals are listed if they do meet any of them. As we know, we've, you know, we've celebrated some of them recently, like the uh, social worker and, you know, in police. So yeah, we have a lot that we're going to be celebrating, I think. Thank you. Diane, did you have anything? Nope, just I, it was wonderful working on these and I'm looking forward to uh, um, sharing with the residents as we slowly uh, implement everything. I know it's going to take a while. You know, we'd like to have everything done right away, but this is going to take a while, but that's okay. So, and thanks to all the directors for assisting in this as well. 
I agree. There's a lot of hard work and a lot of fun work and a lot of good discussion and education, which is going to be ongoing. Thank you. All right, Treasurer Slavens, can I have a roll call on the motion, please? Trustee Borninski. Aye. Trustee Foster. Aye. Trustee Ganguly. Aye. Trust, or Supervisor Graham Hudek. Aye. And uh, Slavens, aye as well. Thank you, motion passes. Our last item on the agenda is G7, consider appointments and reappointment to the Building Board of Appeals. Okay, and I'm gonna do this also in one motion. Madam Supervisor, I move to appoint Sandra Montgomery and Daniel German to the Building Board of Appeals for a two year term to expire April 12th, 2023. And I also move to reappoint Chris Car Carlisle to the Building Board of Appeals for a two year term to expire on April 12th, 2023. Support. Thank you. Thank you. Three vacancies have been created on the Building Board of Appeals due to two members choosing not to apply for reappointment, one member being selected to fill a vacancy on the Planning Commission. In addition, another commissioner, Chris Carlisle, had a term expiration of April 9th, 2021. Mr. Carlisle is interested in reappointment. Information was put in the March focus letter, newsletter and on social media asking for individuals interested in serving on the Building Board of Appeals to submit an application. Members of this board must have technical expertise and familiarity with building codes. From the application submitted, two individuals had the credentials necessary to move forward. Interviews took place in late March and early April. The committee agreed to recommend Sandra Montgomery and Daniel German to the Board of Trustees for new appointments and also to re recommend the reappointment of Chris Carlisle. Sandra Montgomery is a licensed professional engineer registered in the state of Michigan and has worked in facilities for a higher education for 20 plus years. She's currently a facilities engineer and works with skilled trades, facility managers, code inspectors, construction managers, and building commission commissioners on a daily basis. She's directly involved with design review for major construction projects as well as daily operations. Daniel German has been in the commercial construction industry for 14 years. He has worked as a project engineer, a project superintendent, an estimator for both general contracting projects and large concrete projects. He has experience with and still works as a project manager. He holds several safety certifications, has completed the USACE QC QA program, and is currently studying for his Michigan Residential Builders License. He has also served honorably as a combat engineer in the Marine Corps. Chris Carlisle was appointed to the BBA in 2019. His professional experience includes work as a panel design manager, consisting of managing, checking other wall panel designers, as well as designing open cavity wall panels for commercial, multifamily, and residential construction. In addition, he has experience in inspection of residential homes, foundation, HVAC, electrical, plumbing, and roof structure. Uh, Jade, do you have anything to add? Uh, I do not. I, I don't, I was not part of the interview process um, for these. Okay, I, we did interview. Um, does anyone have anything to add, Summer? Do you want anything? Yeah, so I will say that um, these were great applicants. Um, they were highly recommended. Um, I know that um, Rob Kramer participated in the interview process along with um, Trustee Snyderman, Supervisor Graham Hudak, um, and myself. And um, you know, I think these applicants are great. Happy to recommend them. I did not participate um, in the reappointment interview. I had a, a work thing, but um, I, I, I looked over the resume and the qualifications and I think everything looks great. So excited to recommend these candidates for appointment and reappointment. Yes, they are good candidates. Thank you. Anyone else? Great, Treasurer Slavens, please take a roll call on the motion. Here, Trustee Borninski. Aye. Christy Foster. Aye. Christy Ganguly. Aye. Uh, Supervisor Graham Hudak. Aye. And Slavens, aye. Great, thanks. Motion passes. Next item is public comment. Um, we have some attendees. Would anyone like to comment? I don't see any hands raised or phones that have called in. So no one, no one's seen for public comment. Greg, go ahead. Greg, you're not the public. I guess I, I can wait for it till after public and then <laughs> staff okay. comment after that. Okay, great. Uh, staff comment. Go ahead, Greg. 
Okay. Yes, I, I do. Have to say, okay. As, as most of you know, um, Brad Sharp is retiring uh, effective this Friday. All of you probably have heard by now. I hope you have. Um, he's been with the township for over 20 years. And I know with the combination of him and Brad Lear um, leaving us on the same day, the township is certainly going to be feeling a big void between the two of them. I think that's over 40 years of experience that is about to walk out the door Friday. Um, they've both done a great job for Kent Township. Uh, uh, they'll be sorely missed. Um, we appreciate everything that both of them have done for us, really. Um, Brad Sharp, especially for me, he's been a fantastic asset for all of our projects and project management, and it's going to be tough to fill that hole for us, for sure. So um, if you get a chance, um, I believe we're doing a little reception for him on Thursday. We're going to try, if weather cooperates and it looks like it will, we're going to move it outside to the North Pavilion for social distancing. If not, we'll have it in the boardroom. So if anyone, if you're available, um, stop by for that and wish him well in his retirement. Thank you. Yes, he'll be sorely missed. Jade? Yeah, Greg beat me to it. Um, but I do want to, obviously, Brad Lear is still on the, the call with us tonight, but I do want to wish Brad Lear well. He's been with the township for over 26 years, and he's going to be sorely missed. Short period of time that I've been with the township, um, he's been quite the support system. And um, so myself, all of MSD, especially the Department of Public Works, is going to, to miss him and his dedication. Um, in his knowledge. Um, I do have his phone number though. So when he leaves, if we ever need something, I, he's just a phone call away. So best of luck to you, Brad. Um, and then also to Brad Sharp as well. Yes, good luck, good luck, Brad. Anyone else wanna make a comment on that or? Whoops, I will. Okay, Diane. I'll make a real quick comment. Um, yeah, unfortunately, I mean, we're happy for both Brad Sharp in his retirement and Brad Lear in his um, new adventure, um, but they both will sorely be missed. Um, is, you know, during COVID, both of them were here every day helping out, uh, Brad getting, you know, making sure the buildings were okay and Brad Lear making sure whether it was a water main break or what have you. Uh, late into the evening, I'd be here with Bruce and Brad would come and get uh, a lot of the uh, work orders from us. So um, we're gonna miss both of you um, and good luck in your endeavors. Yes, thank you for all of your hard work over the years and we're sorry to lose you, Brad Lear. And we will, um, if you ever wanna come back, our doors are open. And we also wish good luck to um, Brad Sharp in retirement. I would not take that away from anybody. It's, it's, it's good you can get to a place in life where you can retire and enjoy it. That is a great thing. That's what we all strive for, right? Maybe we can get Brad Lear to, to apply for Brad Sharp's job. There you go. <laughs> Brad, did you want Brad Lear, do you want to say anything? No, oh, if he's staying, he's staying with me. <laughs> Sorry, I will get a little territorial at that. <laughs> Mr. Lear, would you like to comment? Uh, I just want to thank Jade and uh, everybody, Jade especially for the kind words. Um, unexpected for you guys to even notice me this evening, but I do appreciate it. Thank you very much. It's been a great, great career here. And like Jade said, not just Jade, anybody has questions, please feel free, call me anytime. My number will be available. I have a lot of history and know a lot about the town. If you have any questions, please do call. Thanks again for everything, guys. Thank you. What's your number? <laughs> <laughs> we want it on public record. Just kidding. No, thank you. Uh, we have a couple of things. I don't know if everybody, the board got a packet, but I just wanted to say that, I mean, Greg had put together everything that the, um, the leisure services group has been doing since January, you know, during COVID and uh, for our residents. And there's a lot of programs here. Um, Chad also put together uh, programs that the police have been doing, you know, during COVID. And there's a lot that happens behind the scenes to help our community. And so, you know, really proud. And I know the board is too about everything they've been doing. Thank you very much. I do want to say that um, we, we created, a, I created a PSA yesterday. Um, unfortunately, we just reached, I just received the numbers 
for today, we had 100 cases in one day. And that's the highest we've ever had. Um, unfortunately, I thought by this time we would be, you know, going in the other direction, but we aren't. And I see restaurants are still, you know, packed. And so we encourage people to eat outside, to take takeout, support, support your, um, your businesses, but do it safely. Uh, be kind to those that drive up windows um, because they're doing their best. A lot of them are understaffed and young people, so they are doing their best. We know that. Uh, we are having our clinics um, 16 and above every Monday and Tuesday with Kroger Pharmacy, so please get vaccinated. The vaccines are working. We're seeing that because the numbers that the people that are being hospitalized are those that are unvaccinated, and the average age is 35, so we see vaccinations are working. Tomorrow, we have just put on our website oh, about an hour ago that we are offering 500 additional vaccinations this week at Schoolcraft. That is Pfizer, I'm sorry, Moderna. It was supposed to be J&J, &J, but because J&J, &J, as we know, was pulled back today, we are now getting the Schoolcraft vaccinations for tomorrow. Wayne County just sent out a news release at 7.30 that they, we know we're going to start seeing these more and more because of the numbers we have. Wayne County is accepting COVID-19 vaccination walk-ups through Saturday at the Taylor Vaccination Clinic at the Wayne County Community College. Um, I believe that's also Pfizer. Yes, Pfizer vaccinations. And so that's 16 years and older. So tomorrow's 18 years and older at Schoolcraft, or if you want to do a walk-up at Taylor, it is 16 years and older. And so people really have to pay attention because there's going to be you know, different age groups on, on some of these uh, facilities. Chris, did you want to speak to that at all? I know you've been in the middle of all of this. Um, no, I think you explained the, um, the vaccination sites real well. Um, other than that, just thank all the Canton Township employees and all the volunteers that are coming out every single Monday and Tuesday to make this work. You know, we've vaccinated a thousand yesterday and a thousand today, um, and it goes very smooth. The um, citizens that are coming in there are real appreciative, and uh, us as, um, you know, Part of the township organization are very appreciative of that as well. Um, the more shots we can get in the arms, the better I think everyone's going to be. So thanks to all the staff and all the volunteers again for their help. We couldn't do it without you. <laughs> Thank you. You're very true. Thanks for saying that. I mean, as of right now, we have helped to vaccinate 11,500 people um, as of today. And if you consider that some of that are, those are double shots, we're looking at 16, 17, 18,000 people, 18,000 vaccinations, I'm sorry, 18,000 vaccinations we've administered. And that is a lot. That is a lot. We're looking at doing this through the end of June and we're hoping that that, that gets us closer to the end in sight. But um, please continue to, um, we did see more and more young people in our vaccination this summer I had gone today. It's more and more young people. Summer, you wanna talk about some of that, what you saw? Or, no, it was great today. Um, it was very efficient, um, had a lot of volunteers helping to move everyone through. There were a lot of young people um, coming through today to get vaccinated, and that was really good to see. I brought my 16-year-old son. He turned 16 on Friday, and so I brought him today <laughs> to get his vaccination, so he was really thrilled about that, but um, it went really smoothly, and I was um, happy that we were able to get it taken care of. And he was okay. He was okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's good to know. I know Commissioner Melissa Dobb took her son also. Um, also, if anyone hasn't noticed, uh, those of us who are still on here, um, I think everybody here probably knows this, but for the public, you know, Clerk Segrist has had his, he and his wife have had their baby. So he'll be announcing that when he gets back, but that's why he is not with us today. And we are, um, this is an all time historical meeting because you have five women running it. And I don't believe that's ever happened in Canton. So we have to take a picture. <laughs> <laughs> um, did anyone have anything else? Diane? I just wanted to say something really quick. I know there's a lot going on this month, but I just want to remind people that it is Autism Awareness uh, Month. Mm -hmm. um, when I was in the House of Representatives, I had the honor of working with the governor and the lieutenant governor to get uh, autism coverage passed. And um, so uh, I just want to remind everybody it's Autism Awareness Month. Thank you. Kate? Um, so Diane kind of uh, got ahead of me there on that, but I did want to say that um, I saw a wonderful um, PSA from Officer Esselink um, about Autism Awareness Month and um, 
some special things that Canton Public Safety is doing. And so I wanted to express my appreciation to Director Baugh. Um, I had already emailed him about it, but I think that um, these calming kits that are going to be um, given to the officers in the Canton Pub Public Safety are a, a wonderful idea. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm just mad that I didn't like come up with the idea and pass it along <laughs> myself because um, I I think it's it's just a great thing and I'm you know, glad that you know that residents with the neurological differences are being recognized and that their needs are going to be addressed. So um, I appreciate that and I also wanted to say that um, I noticed in the update from Greg that therapeutic rec recreation is. Um, still taking place. Um, looks like a lot of it's virtual, but um, I appreciate that too. My my own son, who is on the autism spectrum, um, did um, participate in some therapeutic recreation activities. So um, I appreciate all that we do for our uh, our uh, residents who have neurological differences, whatever they may be, and and also any of our disabled residents. So thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you, uh, Trustee Brinsky. I just want to uh, acknowledge you, uh, your email and uh, leisure services also help contribute to some of the recent training of our police officers. We're going to incorporate some of your ideas too about uh, make sure we can uh, market the ability to register with our township and our dispatch center um, with the Autism Alliance. So we, we do have their permission um, to expand that not only uh, through you know the messaging that we saw with Patty, but also with uh, trying to get that on the township website, and I'll talk to Greg about maybe on his website, the police website, and the township website. So, uh, depending where people might land uh, through their uh, searches, uh, they'll have that opportunity to see that connection. So, thanks. Thank you, Tanya. Yeah, I, I was really appreciative of the video. Um, I really liked it because um, I'm the last year spoken to some parents in the community and they are very appreciative of the services that we provide for, um, you know, for the, some of the things that we do uh, for, the, for the people in the community who have neurological issues and uh, especially people on the spectrum. And um, apart from that, I also wanted to say that um, there are a lot of celebrations happening um, this week in the community for, uh, for various members of the community. Today is um, a big holiday for the state community. Um, they're celebrating Baitaki, which is basically a celebration of the new, new year, the formation of the formal formation of the Sikh religion. So I wanted to wish our Sikh community members a happy Baitaki, and there's a lot of new year celebrations happening in the various Indian American um, language communities um, this week. So I wanted to um, acknowledge that and uh, wishing everybody who are celebrating this week um, a very happy new year. And um, also, um, I also wanted to point out that um, to the Cultural Commission, um, Summer I think is on the, Summer Sakitani who is part of the Cultural Commission and we are we have put together an initiative of something called How to Spell Canton, uh, which we are trying to work with different businesses. Like, you know, people can go and collect letters and different art formats, C-A-M-T-O-N, from different businesses. And uh, I think it's a great initiative. We have put it out on, uh, on our Cultural Commission page on the website, and people have till um, end of August, and we will uh, we'll see the, the the, we will be doing um, award distribution in September for that. And I think it's a good way for people to get out um, in this um, upcoming warmer months in the parks, support the businesses so that we can, we can work towards art and culture and also support the businesses at the same time. So I'm looking forward to what the residents of the community come up with um, and how they spell Canton. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? And you said Ramadan also. I'm sorry. Right, Tanya? 
it's hard to hear a little. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, no. Yeah, I know. I didn't speak about Ramadan. And I'm sorry. That, yes. No. They, um, yeah, you can go ahead, Anne-Marie. Oh, no, no. Ramadan Mubarak. We know our community members. Yeah, started yeah fasting. the members in our community are, had, they started their, um, you know, their spiritual journey of their month of Ramadan yesterday. And um, we will be celebrating, um, like, when the month ends uh, in the month of May still have Eid celebrations. So I want, I wish all the uh, members um, of the Muslim community a uh, good spiritual and peaceful month of Ramadan. Thank you. Anyone else? Great, thank you. Um, can I have a motion to adjourn? I make, Madam Supervisor, I make a motion that we adjourn. Support. Thank you. Treasurer Slavin, thank you for serving as clerk today, and please take a roll call on the motion. <laughs> Trustee Borninski. Aye. Trustee Foster. Aye. Trustee Ganguly. Aye. Uh, Supervisor Grand Hudak. Aye. And Slavin's aye. All right. I'm just going to take a picture here. Everybody smile. <laughs> All right, thank you. Uh, thanks everyone. Okay. Well, everyone have a great evening and stay safe and convince, uh, wear your masks and, uh, have a good night. Thank you.